last week we were we ended right on the stroke of the time to end. On, we were in Acts two and four, looking at them, where it talked about the believers being of one mind. There was unity in the body of Christ, and nobody considered anything to be their own. There was a selflessness, not a selfishness, right? And it says it, and there was no need among them. Yes. Now, can you look at the church today and say, there's no need? No, you cannot. Well, what's the difference? The difference is self. Because selfishness is the fruit of, of pride, mm -hmm. all right? We're going to go into greed. Mm -hmm. Because pride always leads to greed. Mm -hmm. Because everything is about you, okay, what you have, what you deserve to have, all right? What you want. In Second Timothy chapter 3, you know, in that second verse, he starts out, for men will be lovers of self. Then he goes on and says, and lovers of money. Okay, lovers of money. Men will be lovers of, of money. Now, let me be perfectly clear. So don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Money is not evil. Right? That's it's correct. the love of money that is the problem. That leads to that's what That's what Paul wrote to Timothy in the first letter he wrote. He said, for the love of money is the root of all evil. And some by longing for it have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. And it, does that say it, it's the root of all evil or all sorts of evil? Depends on which translation you're using. Okay. You know what? I mean, you may get into evil without being caused by the love of money, but I promise you the love of money will always bring evil into your life. Yes. It's a, it just throws open the door. Because it's an idol. Well, it is, because the love of money, when you begin to, you'll begin to trust in money. Yes. And that, as Paul says in Colossians, is idolatry. Right. So you have an idol in your life. Mm -hmm. And this is why Jesus said, Beware and be on your guard against every form of greed, because it's idolatry. In the Sermon on the Mount, remember I've said this, and I, I will stand by this till my last breath on this planet. Everything is wrapped up in the Sermon on the Mount. Yes. That is the message. That is the message. And everything else is basically either leading up to it to prepare you for that, or commentary on it. Okay? And Jesus said, no one can serve two masters. For he will either hate the one and love the other, or he'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, God and wealth. Mm -hmm. Matthew 6, 24. It's an impossibility. But he, he always said, and I, you know, we did a study uh, quite a while back, which is still up on the Bible Talk site, on the Sermon on the Mount. All right? We did 29 out of 30 hours on the Sermon on the Mount. People think that having a lot of money will serve them. Jesus said, no, no. It's not, the money's not going to serve you. You're going to wind up serving the money. You right? become the slave. But when you start to put your trust in it, here, here's the thing about trust. And I just use this example because it's in the prophet Isaiah. Mm -hmm. And it's just one of many examples where people are trusting in, their, you know, they're astrologers. They're going to find out what they need to be doing, what's their, what their fate is and everything, going to astrology. And God speaks through Isaiah and says, you're wearied with your many counsels. Let now the astrologers, those who prophesy by the stars, those who predict by the new moons, let them stand up and save you from what will come upon you. Isaiah 47, 13. You know, if you put your trust in the world and the things of the world, God's going to sit back and say, okay, you trusted in them, let them save you. You trusted in your money in the bank? How secure is that? I don't know how old you may be, but my goodness gracious, you're probably in these times old enough to remember how wealth can fail you. Here in the United States of America, which is probably one of the most secure places, but it's done it around the world. There's been the economic collapse. And I don't believe that we have seen what true economic collapse can be. And, it, and if you're not prepared, it will lead to despair. You know, in the great collapse, the 29, mm -hmm. the market collapse, People in southern Manhattan, I mean, they're flinging themselves out of the windows in despair. And we've had close to that in the economic collapse that was worldwide. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe that we've seen anything yet mm -hmm. as compared to what's coming. Mm -hmm. 
So you need to be prepared for those things. And the only way you can be prepared is by learning to trust in the Lord. Amen. Like I said in the very beginning, that my soul waits in silence for God only. Amen. From Him is my salvation. Right. If you're training yourself, learning to trust in God, you are preparing yourself for whatever comes. Okay? What a fellowship, what a joy